Welcome to my talk about Dolbo cohomology of linear manifolds. Let me fix the setup first. So for us, capital G will always be a simply connected real nilpotent Lie group and G will be the corresponding Lie algebra and which we consider as um, left invariant vector fields. And then we will always assume that there is gamma in G, a co-compact lattice. So the quotient G mod gamma, this will be denoted by M, is a compact nil manifold. We will usually assume that there is a complex structure on M in the following way. We have an almost complex structure on the vector space G. Write this carefully. And we will assume that this is integrable in the sense that the naked nose tensor vanishes. Since this is, uh, we consider G as left invariant vector fields and, fields and gamma acts on the left, this descends to a almost complex structure which is integrable on the tangent bundle of M. So we get MJ, just a pair MJ, a compact complex manifold. And this is the kind of manifold, this is often called a complex nil manifold. Um, and this is the kind of manifold we are interested in. Let's consider some examples. If G is abelian, then M is a real torus, so it's S1 to the K or to the, say, N. And um, if I introduce a complex structure, then I get a complex torus. Another classical example is the Iwasawa manifold for which we consider the Heisenberg group of upper triangular matrices. So it's the group of matrices of the form 1, Z1, Z3, 0, 1, Z2, 0, 0, 1. It's Z, I, and C. And um, gamma is uh, G intersected with GL3, 
with entries, matrices with entries in the Gaussian integers, and then I is given by G mod gamma is the Eva Zava manifold. And a third example is um, the Godire Thurston manifold. This was found by Kodaira in his classification of complex surfaces and then re reintroduced by Thurston as an example of a symplectic manifold that does not admit a Kana structure. So this is constructed as a nil manifold in the following way. I take G to be matrices of the form 1, Z1 bar, Z2, 0, 1, Z1, 0, 0, 1, Z, I, and C. So as a manifold, this is isomorphic to C2 with coordinates Z1, Z2. Only the group action is not the usual addition, but some kind of affine, um, affine group action. And then gamma again is G intersected with GL3 with entries in the Gaussian integers. And then M is J is um, G mod gamma. So the second example, the Iwasawa manifold, is actually complex parallelizable. But the Kodaira Thurston manifold is not complex parallelizable because G is not a complex Lie group. Multiplication by a fixed element on the left is holomorphic, but it does not depend holomorphically on this element. So if multiplication, left multiplication is not a holomorphic multiplication in G. Okay. You should note that um, by a theorem by Benson Gordon, if a near manifold is a Kähler manifold, then it is a complex torus. So this class of manifolds is important in the context of non kähler geometry. Now let's consider some differential forms on um, um, on my manifold. So first of all, if I consider the Deram complex, then I can look at the subcomplex of left invariant forms. And by Cartan's formula, the differential restricts to this subcomplex. And um, this complex is also known purely algebraically in the context of Lie algebra cohomology as the Chevalier complex. But we are on a complex manifold, so we are also interested in Dolbeau cohomology, or um, more generally, I can consider the um, the bi complete the double complex given by um, the splitting of the differential by the complex structure. So I have my p q, q forms on X, and um, all of them. And I have the differentials del bar and del. 
And as a subset, so this is the Bohr double complex. And again, I can restrict to left invariant forms. So I get, let's call this lambda PQG. And um, del bar and del. This is the sub double complex of left invariant forms. And again, these operators del bar and del by the Cartan formula can be described purely algebraically and restrict to the subcomplex of left invariant forms. The starting point for the whole business is the following theorem, due to Namizu, 54, which says this um, inclusion one induces an isomorphism so the left hand side if I interpret this as a Chevalier complex uh, it, it computes the cohomology of the Lie algebra G with values in the trivial module but you can also just interpret it this as the cohomology of the left invariant forms on M and this is isomorphic to the Deram cohomology of M. In particular, the Ram cohomology can be represented by left invariant forms. Let's look at a particular example, namely again if G is abelian, then H star the Ram of S1 to the N is isomorphic to just um, the exterior algebra, even as an algebra, to the exterior algebra on um, R to the N. So every the Ram class on a torus is represented by a constant differential form. Okay, now we bring the complex structure into play. Namely, here is the conjecture. This inclusion 2 induces isomorphisms on the book homology. So star I just give a name to the left hand side it's HPQ GJ this is just the cohomology of the double cohomology on the level of left invariant forms and there is clearly a map to the usual double cohomology of MJ induced by the inclusion of left invariant forms. In particular, the Dolbo cohomology just depends on the Lie algebra and the complex structure, so does not depend, not depend 
on my lattice gamma. But only on the Lie algebra and the complex structure. Okay, let's collect some evidence for this. What is known? The conjecture holds in the following cases. The oldest one is Dutu Sakane. 76 and this is when x or, or um, when g is a complex lead group by which I mean that really um, the complex structure comes from a complex holomorphic structure on G. Then the next step was um, done oh. by Cordero Fernandez Gray and Ugarte And I'll not be uh -oh. terribly precise, but um, they prove that um, the conjecture holds if, for example, J is abelian. This doesn't mean that the Lie algebra is abelian, but it means that the subalgebra of um, vectors of uh, type 1, 0 in the complexification satisfies um, is, is an abelian subalgebra. So the commutator is trivial. Um, the fact that this is a subalgebra is more or less equivalent to the fact that the complex structure is integrable. This was extended by um, Console and Fino. Okay, so this is from 2000. In 2001, in this holds, if J is gamma rational, I'll explain later what I mean by this. And um, it was finally um, extended further by Tomassini, myself, and Wang to the case where J is nilpotent. Mm -hmm. Um, so the first three, so this is, this is from, from last, from this year, actually. So from, I mean, this appeared this year. One, two, and three can be, um, can be subsumed under a more vague statement which says that uh, it is true if the complex nil manifold has um, has nice geometry 
more precisely, should be an iterated vibration. Um, and this is, I mean, this was basically contained in Cordero von Endes Grave Garter, was made uh, more explicit by Consul and, and more general by Consul and Fino. And um, there's a variant of this by myself, by Anna Fino, myself, and uh, Jean Ropenthal. So there are a lot of cases where this is known, and um, and also the result with Tomasini and Wang falls into this kind of um, category. Oh, this all these results together imply that um, it is true if the real dimension of the Lie algebra is at most six. Now, this is because by a, uh, there's a finite list of Lie algebras in real dimension 6 that can carry a complex structure. This was worked out by Simon Salomon. And then one can check case by case. Um, so most cases were done by myself in 2000. And um, okay, it's, it's, it's contained in my... Um, in my dissertation, so it's from 2007, and then it was completed. There was one missing case, which, which was completed by Tomasini, myself, and Wang, and by a different method by myself, together with Anna Fino and Jean Rupontal. So this is from 2019. Furthermore, um, Consul and Fino proved that star holds on an open subset of J's. Now, the complex structures in the vector space are parametrized by some subset of the Grassmannian where integrability is another condition, but then an open subset of this satisfies the condition. It could still be empty, but if I have one, then I get an open subset. And um, I proved that some in 2009, I think, that um, star holds after possibly enlarging gamma. Mm -hmm. So there's... Um, i.e. there exists a larger lattice gamma prime such that this is of finite index and um, and star holds on m prime j which is g mod gamma prime together with the complex structure j. What is the upshot of this? You know, if you look at the evidence, I mean, there is a lot of evidence. There are a lot of structures where we already know that the conjecture holds. And if you do not care about the lattice, then you might always go to a larger lattice and then um, you are fine. So the upshot is You may assume star holds unless um, 
g is complicated, and j is complicated, and you care about a specific gamma. Right? And this means that if you are, I mean, the most near manifolds are used is they are used as examples. So if you just want an example, then um, you can either arrange that G and J are not complicated and it holds anyway for, for all gammas, or if you really cannot make J and G really simple, then you can in, you can possibly you can choose a clever gamma and assume that the conjecture holds. All right. So, um, in some sense, our knowledge is quite definite for all we care. Okay. Now, what is the plan for the rest of the talk? Um, uh, I want you to, to give you an idea how, so, first of all, I give you an idea of um, proof for Numitu theorem. Because it contains the, the starting point and it contains the, the essence of the idea um, for the first results in, in this direction, in the direction of the conjecture. And um, so then um, I'll explain why this idea does not always work and um, I'll explain a little bit what new idea was necessary to make progress in the recent years. Okay, so um, let's start. with proof of the Mito theorem. We do induction on nu, which is the near potency index. So I have my nil manifold, uh, my, my, my nil potent Lie algebra, and I consider the descending central series, so C1 is G is the commutator, GG. Then inside this I have C2 of G, um, which is the commutator of G with C1 of G, and so on until finally, because it's not potent, C nu of G, the newest commutator is zero. Uh, this is the, let's put a not equal here, so nu is really the, the potency index. And, um, and now consider my G, and inside this, I consider an ideal A, which is the new minus one 
commutator. So this is an abelian um, central ideal. The quotient will be called G prime. And then I can start the induction. So let's consider the case nu equal to 1. So G is a billion. And um, M is a torus. And this is classical. You can either do it by topology or you can use Fourier analysis to, um, to show that every, that for, a, for a, an invariant metric, every a harmonic form is actually constant. Okay, so. Um, If I want to do the induction step, then I consider this exact sequence. And corresponding to this, I have a vibration of my Lie group G on the Lie group G prime corresponding to the Lie algebra G prime with fiber A. This is a, a principal bundle. And then I mod out by the lattice. So I get an S1 to the Say R sits in M, sits in uh, fibers over M prime. This is a torus principal bundle. So I want to compute the Durham cohomology of M. And I can do this from base and fiber by the Leray spectral sequence. Which goes as E2RS is HR of M prime with values in the local system H S of the fiber which converges to H R plus S of M. Now I can set up the same kind of spectral sequence on the level of left invariant forms and um, I have a map here so here yeah, I have E two uh, sorry two R S is H R of G prime with values in the Lie algebra cohomology H S of um, A and this converges to H R plus S G, with values in the trivial module R, but uh, I'll skip this here. So this is um, this is called uh, the Hochschild. Um, no, no, sorry. It, um, I think it's called the Hochschild's there 
um, cohomology, um, a spectral sequence in Lie algebra cohomology. But here, note that on the fiber, this is an isomorphism. So the new equal to one case gives um, here, let me underline this to stress that this is local coefficients. The new equal to one case gives an isomorphism of H as of F with H as of A. And this is the trivial case of the torus. And uh, induction gives an isomorphism on the E2 page of the spectral sequence, but then I get an isomorphism also on the infinity page, so on the Dharam cohomology. Okay, so this is the idea. I just compare my, um, my methods to compute this via a spectral sequence of a vibration, and then I, um, um, since it, it works on the E2 term, then it works at the infinity term, which is the one I'm interested in. Um, if you were careful, you might notice that I cheated you. And I cheated you at this point here. The fact that this vibration descends to the compact manifold is not trivial. But true. And this is the problem that we encounter when we get the complex structure into the game. Let me um, state this as a proposition. Okay, let's... Um, Let's take G, the Lie algebra G and gamma as above. Um, maybe, maybe let's even add the complex structure into the mix. Um, let's say H in G is an ideal and because we are on nilpotent groups and the exponential um, map is a diffeomorphism this corresponds or corresponding to a closed subgroup H and G, and um, and then I have um, pi from G to G mod H, which is G prime. Then. Um, A, pi is holomorphic with respect to J, if and only if H is J invariant, or if you consider G as a complex vector space, uh, this means that this is a complex sub subspace. And 
um, B, the following are equivalent. First, gamma intersected H is a co-compact lattice. is equivalent to second. Um, pi of gamma is a lattice in G prime is equivalent to, and this is the important condition which is only true in the near potent case, um, is that if I take log gamma, I intersect with the ideal H, this is now a discrete subset of G, um, and now I take the R span of this, then I get back H. Now this is often, I mean, there's a whole... Um, one could explain this more in detail in terms of rational structures on subalgebras. So this is what we call H is gamma rational. And uh, my, my favorite reference for these kinds of, um, of results on lattices in important Lie groups is the book by Corbin and Greenleaf um, representations of Neapolitan Lee groups one and this is in chapter five where you can find a good explanation of all these kinds of of results. Um, and this third condition, yeah, the third condition is um, is crucial because um, the corollary says um, So three holds for all naturally defined ideals. For example, the center, the commutators, um, intersections thereof, and so on. Yeah. So, if you think back, let, let's go back to the proof for a second, where I cheated you. You see, what we did in the proof was we mod out by A and A was one of these commutator ideals. So, um, automatically, the lattice is compatible with the corresponding subgroup and induces a vibration on the nil manifold. Let's formulate another corollary. Um, an ideal H in G induces a holomorphic Vibration, if and only if H is J invariant and gamma rational. Let's say on MJ to be precise. So in the real case, we 
just had to deal with this gamma rational condition, and we can find a lot of ideals satisfying this. In the complex world, we have to deal with two conditions, namely gamma rationality and J invariance, and sometimes they exclude each other, and we will see this shortly. Okay, so um, now let me return to Dolbeau cohomology. Mm -hmm. The idea of the work of Cordero, Fernandez, Gray, Ugarte, and Consu and Fino was. Let us find um, a filtration G. Let's say G is um, V0 contains V1 such that up to Vk um, and then 0 such that Vi is uh, J invariant and gamma rational. So I have a I have a sequence of vibrations, and Vi over Vi plus one is abelian. And then is um, my MJ is an iterated bundle um, or let's say iterated tors um, or iterated bundle in complex tori. Mm -hmm. Note that I wrote K here, so this K could be different from the nil potency index, it could be bigger than the nil potency index or smaller. Um, so um, sometimes, um, so you need to really adapt your filtration to the Lie algebra and the complex structure at hand. Um, so if I have this iterated bundle structure, uh, then um, I do induction on K plus appropriate spectral sequences. Now, clearly, for the Dolbeau cohomology, my spectral sequences will have more gradings and will be more complicated, but if you pay proper attention, then this can be worked out that there are the, the right spectral sequences. I get an isomorphism on the E2 term by some induction hypothesis, and then I can go on to, um, to conclude for the total space. Okay. So this is the idea behind, the, uh, behind what was known, except for the openness and the other stuff, um, around 2000-2001. But um, there is a problem case which cannot be covered by this approach. Problem. Does not work if there are no gamma rational J invariant ideals. Hmm. Then I can get no vibration and if I have no vibration, I cannot use the spectral sequence um, to conclude. 
So let me let me give you the key example that this actually occurs, that this is a real problem and not just uh, an imaginary problem. No? So let G be H7. Uh, this is the numbering used by um, Salomon and comes from some classification of nilpotent um, Lie algebras. And this is the free two step nilpotent Lie algebra on three generators. So this is explicitly, I can write this as R3 plus wedge 2 R3, where the wedging is just given by, by wedging. Or if I want to have generators, um, I write the first Three generators to be E1, E2, E3, and then um, E4, which should be the bracket of E1 and E2, um, E5, which should be the bracket of E1 and E3, and E6, which should be the bracket of E2 and E3. And if you're familiar with this notation, um, I, I will not explain it, but if you're familiar with this notation, this is isomorphic to the um, Lie algebra given by the dual structure equations 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. Okay, um, there is an easy lemma which you can pr prove. There exists a unique uh, complex structure, structure up to Lie algebra isomorphism. Um, namely, one representative is given by J of E 2i minus 1 is equal to E of 2i and J squared is minus the identity. Now this defines an almost complex structure. It's easy to check that this is integrable and uh, every other complex structure is related to this one. Um, proposition. Also easy to check. The only the only J invariant ideals are the following chain of ideals, there is a zero ideal. There's the ideal given by E4, uh, E5, E6. There's the ideal, I'll call this one A. There's the ideal given by E3 up to E6. This is F. And there's the full the algebra. So if I want on my complex nil manifold associated to this Lie algebra with this complex structure, if I want um, a holomorphic vibration, then I have very few choices for ideals to use. Okay, now I need to define a lattice. And um, 
I define my lattice gamma a, this depends on um, on a in in the real numbers. So a is a real yes, a can be any real number. Gamma a should be exp of the z span of the following vectors. Um, namely, I take square root 2 times e1, square root 2 times e2, um, square root of 2 times e3 plus a e1, then I have e4, e5, and a e4 minus e6. There is some checking now that this is actually a lattice. This is not too difficult. And um, a small computation shows um, a or f gamma rational or gamma a rational if and only if a is in q so for most choices of a both are not gamma rational so if a is in q this implies that um, okay let's let's do this differently i let m um, m a is the complex manifold G mod gamma A, J. Before I, I, I always fix the lattice and vary the complex structure. Now I have a fixed complex structure and I'm varying the lattice. And so um, the observation is if a is in q then by for example console and fino or cordero fernandez gray ugarte um, the conjecture holds for m a because in that case i have a nice iterated torus bundle and um, the, the, the complex structure is even important so I can apply any of these papers. So uh, what happens if A is not in Q? Mm -hmm. um, if A is not in Q, then there is no holomorphic vibration over a complex near manifold of lower dimension. So the methods of um, Conso and Fino and Federer Fernandez Gray Ugarte do not apply. And this was the only missing case in dimension six um, where we could not prove the conjecture. 
So the question is, how do we overcome this difficulty? Um, how to make progress? And I'll not, not go into the details here because it gets quite complicated and a little bit messy. Um, but the main observation is the following. In this example, A and F define um, holomorphic foliations. on MA. We don't get a vibration, but we get a foliation. Now you should think about, uh, to connect this to something familiar, think about um, the, the quotient from R2 to S1 squared, and then if I take an irrational line, then I get this line winding around the torus. And if I take a rational line, then I get a nice vibration on my torus. And this is exactly the, the same phenomenon in, for a general A, so A not in Q. Um, okay, if A is in Q, then I get a nice vibration. But if A is not in Q, then I get foliations because I get these submanifolds which unfortunately do not close up to give compact fibers, but um, give non-compact submanifolds or non-compact um, immersed submanifolds, but not embedded submanifolds. So compare. I'll not try to, uh, I'll not try to draw this, uh, this leaf on the torus because I'm, I'm going to fail. Um, so this is the first main observation and the second main observation is the Lie algebra side works without reference to gamma or gamma A in this case. So on the Lie algebra side, we have all the spectral sequences we want. And, um, and so what we need to use is um, so we need to find a way to use the foliation on the geometric side to connect um, to the algebraic side and do induction. And this has been done in, um, in two different ways. Um, um, by um, myself joined with Anna Fino and uh, Jean Ropenthal and also by myself with Adriano Tomassini and Xu Wang. And um, I'll just say that here um, we use uh, some kind of uh, complex analysis or 
we, we need to have quite strict assumptions on um, um, on the leaves of my foliation and then can um, can go on and this one is uh, slightly more general but not I mean does not really imply the the other result but it's more applicable um, this uses uh, a decomposition of Laplacians Uh, maybe not. Let me maybe I'll write Laplacians. Um, I'll not go into any more details about uh, this, but um, it proves. I mean, both approaches prove the. Um, the, the conjecture for this particular example H7 and um, and um, and also for some other examples um, but um, um, yeah but but the um, H7 example was the one which bothered me the most because I wanted to have at least the case of dimension real dimension 6 completed. Before I conclude, let me mention that there are some generalizations of these results. Um, um, let's say further reading or um, further study can be done if you um, listen to the other talks in this series. You will learn something about solve manifolds, where these um, these results are much more subtle uh, than in the Neil manifold case. Um, and there was also something done for uh, generalized complex structures under some conditions or for um, almost complex structures but um, I think I don't have I'm not entirely sure uh, who I should attribute this to so um, I'll, I'll leave you to find it out for yourself if you're interested in these other kinds of structures thank you for your attention.